Hey everyone, it's Jack from whatculture.com and I'm here today with a brand new series. It's called Ups and Downs. Now, this series has been inspired by a very popular article on whatculture.com every week by the lovely Scott Carlson. Go and check that out if you haven't read it already. And in it, we're gonna look back at this week's Monday Night Raw, recap all the positives, all the negatives, and then see whether there's more ups or more downs, because like many things in life, you can only look at it as good or bad. So without further ado, let's up those downs. Yeah. Now first up, let's look at the fans' reaction when Roman Reigns came to the ring. The announcers, and particularly JBL, played this off as the fact that he's such a big star, he just inspires passion, whether it's positive or negative. And we all know that's a massive lie. Roman was once again booed out of the building. So for his blatant lie, I'm afraid JBL, you've given us our first down of the new series. Second up, you might have noticed that the team of Roman Reigns and the Uso twins now has an official title. They're called the Bloodline. That's a down. That's down. Next up, we've got a brand new stipulation for the Dean Ambrose v Chris Jericho match at Extreme Rules. That's the Asylum match, which is basically, if you've watched TNA, uh, Raven's Clockwork of Orange House of Clockwork Fun match. Uh, anyway, it should be an exciting one, and that's going to be our first up of the new series. Next, we have the New Day's hilarious promo where they went into Xavier Woods' time machine and went back in time all the way to the era of the Vaude villains. And because it was a top comedic segment, and because it made the Vaude villains look strong as well, that's an up. Next up, and you might think this is going to be a down, but you'll be surprised because we here at What Culture actually quite enjoy the random pairing of Darren Young and Bob Backlund. It's always fun to see legends come back out of the blue, and I think that. Backlund's got enough of a sense of humour to actually make this quite a success, so that's enough. Speaking of comedic tag team pairings, we finally, after five months of pointless backstage promos, we finally saw the on-screen in-ring debut of R-Truth and Gold Dust. Hooray! It's not. It's a down. They lost. NXT developmental tag team Corey Hollins and John Schuyler also made their in-ring debuts this week, and yet Michael Cole referred to them as different names, even though they had their names on their tights. More respect for the jobbers, please. That's a down. And we're absolutely swimming in new tag teams this week. We also saw the repackaged Luchadores, Primo and Epico, and they're now called the Shining Stars. And for that name alone, I think we've got another down. Some positive news now, everyone's favorite, second favorite member of Enzo and Cass, Big Cass, was kept strong, defeating Devon in very short order this week. So that's an up. We also saw the singles debut of Dana Brooke because as we all know now, Emma was sadly injured. And that means that Dana's got to carry the feud with Becky Lynch on her own. And yet, despite that, she did look a little bit out of her depth. So for now, that's a down, but best of luck to Dana because she is a fantastic heel. Next up, where is Sasha Banks? That has to count as a down. And once again, she was completely absent from WWE Raw. Now, as Scott points out in the article, uh, Sasha hasn't made an in-ring televised appearance for four weeks now. And while there's rumors that WWE may have been helping her to hide an injury or are gonna be saving her for a big summer angle, you still have to consider it a disappointment that one of the most talented women on the entire roster isn't getting much TV time. Stephanie McMahon slapped Ric Flair in the face and he fell over like a clown. And while the Nature Boy isn't quite, you know, the 16-time world champion that he once was, WWE are running the risk of turning him into a joke figure and that can't help Flair and it, more importantly perhaps, can't help Charlotte either. So for that reason, we're gonna have to make it a down. A good point now, one definitely for the up column, is the fact that Rusev is a monster challenger for Kalisto's US Championship, so good work there. Now focusing on the Intercontinental title, that division looks very healthy as well, with The Miz, Cesaro, Owens and Sami Zayn facing off in a fantastically entertaining tag match this week, so that's another up too. Now, sadly, another one for the down column. Gallows and Anderson were monster heels when they made their debut and they were legitimately quite terrifying. And now they've lost so many times to the Usos as they did this week. <clears throat> it's just hard to buy them as such a big threat anymore. And finally, and we've debated long and hard whether this should be an up or a down, AJ Styles hitting the Styles Clash on Roman Reigns onto a steel chair. On one hand, this is an amazing new turn in their feud because it proves that AJ isn't just a better wrestler than Roman, he's also willing to go the extra lengths that Reigns is too. But then on the other hand, shouldn't this have been a spot that was saved for Sunday? And doesn't that kind of imply that now AJ has blown his big spot that he's not going to win? Ultimately though, I think we're going to make it an up because not only does it again put AJ on a similar platform to the WWE Champion, which is amazing, who thought we'd be seeing that a few months ago, uh, it also looks quite promising for his prospects after this feud too, so good work there. 
That's all we've got time for this week on Ups and Downs, the first ever edition of Ups and Downs, and sadly, as you can see, this week's Raw had more negative points than positive. Hopefully they can turn things around next week. Uh, I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com. Be sure to check out Scott Carlson's fantastic weekly article. Uh, the link's in the description below, and I'll see you soon. WhatCulture.com are releasing a new magazine about wrestling, and it's called Wrestling. It'll have 140 pages of timeless wrestling content, including a brand new How WWE Should Have Booked written by this virulent son of a bitch. It will also have a list of the 100 best wrestling matches of all time compiled by What Culture staff and wrestling insiders. So the magazine is available to pre-order now. Follow the link in the description and enjoy WhatCulture.com's Wrestling. <laughs>